vibe this morning. I saw yeah, a video. We were talking about it right before the podcast about the the guy in India. He was trying to convert them. Apparently, Jamie was saying, <laughs> and they shot him full of arrows. With the, one of the last uncontacted tribes in the world. But what a doofus! What did you think was going to happen, right? Jamie said the guy's been there before, right? Did you say that? So they knew him. Though the guy, well, I don't know if the people that killed him knew him. Wouldn't they say there's f- between 50 and 100 people on this island, I believe? See if you can get a good article on it. Is that Sorry, the number? I'm trying to pull up an article. So there's like 50 or fifty to 150 people. They don't exactly know. Um, and they they came there, to say from, it's the Siles of Manhattan. It's an island. And they came there from Africa, like, what is it, like 60,000 years ago? That's what I'd read. I don't remember exactly where I'd. The article and this I read is earlier, near India. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in, in India or near in, near India, some island. Yeah, um, so this fucking dude was trying to bring him to Jesus, and uh, they said, "If you like the guy, we'll introduce yeah. you to him." They filled that motherfucker full of. Oh wow, it's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's fucked. That bitch is in the middle of nowhere. So they came off of Africa. That's crazy. How the fuck Spread did that they out so leave? I could go see all that shit? That's crazy. Yeah. You know what's interesting too? In England, they call uh, people from India Asians. They think of that as Asia because it is, yeah, because right? it is Asia. Asia. Yeah. But we got weird with Oriental at some point in time. Oriental became derogatory, some weird way. Yeah. Oriental yeah. was normal, like yeah, Oriental yeah. rugs. That was like yeah. a thing. You could go to Oriental rugs. Yeah. That's like if someone was saying, you know, spick toothpaste. Like, <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, motherfucker, you can't say that shit anymore. But at one point in time, Oriental was like a total... It was, it was a real thing. Yeah. yeah, it was part of the language. Um, but so now we say Asian because we try to be politically correct. But Asia is fucking giant. Yeah. There's a lot of different kinds of folks in Asia, you know? What What were those, like the, the people that ended up on that island? One dude. They, oh, no, the people, no, that, uh, the original the, people? Yeah. yeah. They, how the fuck do you... You're running away from something to end up there. Well, everybody's... That's, you know, uh, if you read about the migration of people from Africa spreading out, that's a big part of what they're doing is trying to get away from people that are trying to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's all either they run out of resources, they run out of food, or they're being they're being forced out of areas. Like, new people come in, people escape and survive. And did our entire history as human beings, it's like bigger, more powerful human beings move into an area and kill and rape. And then spread spread out and then keep going. And everybody else just keeps going. And then they eventually fortify in the distance and get a new city. And they try to hold them off. And then new people are coming through. I mean, there's so many instances from the Mongols to the Romans. I mean, you can go back and back and back all through history. But if you broke it down, if you looked at it like a math problem, like what's happening here? Here's what's happening. These groups of people get together and then they develop some shit that kills other groups of people. And they push into those groups of people and try to fuck their chicks. (laughs) (laughs) They try to steal their money, (laughs) fuck their chicks, eat their food. And then they do the same thing. And then then people go back and forth. and, And this is all people have done. Like there's never been a time where no one was at war. Like, if, you, if you've ever gone through human history, there's now like, well, there was a period of 100 years where there was no wars. It's never happened. Yeah. Never. It's and never you, happened. You're the best guy to ask about this. Isn't it impressive how they built those arrows, right? The craftsmanship, because they're proper I don't arrows. don't know what they look like. They, they flew they up. have pictures of the arrows? But apparently he died just of the arrows hitting him. So the way I was thinking it was in order for an arrow to be done properly, right? Hmm. And you could aim and then hit someone and kill them. It has to go through... The whole uh, structure of the pelvis? No, it doesn't have to. I mean, especially if the kid hit him a bunch of times. You know, if they hit him a bunch of times, they could have shot him in the gut. Even with shitty arrows? Well, I don't think they have shitty arrows because they need them to survive, right? So there's got to be island animals, and they're hunting these animals. But it's not that hard for these people and these kind of tribes to, if they have the proper wood on the island, you know, they... um, They've been people have been making bows and arrows for a long time, and they they'll use certain fibers from certain trees, and they weave them together and make a bowstring. And you know, if they have enough good wood, and they have good fiber, and they have the knowledge, I mean, even if they don't have metal, you could still to this day. I found one in Nevada. I found an old, I don't know what era it's from, but I found a an arrowhead. But while I was actually bow hunting, I found an actual arrowhead from some Native American tribe that they had left by. And apparently they were, like, really common. Like, people find them all the time. Because you think of the thousands of years that the indigenous people were here and all the different animals they shot with bows and arrows, they figured out how to do it. Yeah. So these people must know how to do it, too. And if they have enough good stone to make, you know, something flint or something similar to make the arrowheads 
or maybe they're using something toxic. Maybe they have some sort of toxic plant and they're just dipping the tip of a, a sharpened tip into it. If if you dip uh, the, the tip in something toxic, don't uh, can you eat that meat? Yeah, after? you can apparently. But but not the area near the it's arrow. A good question. It's a good question. I don't know, but a lot of these tribes um, that shoot things, they they shoot things with poison on the end of their arrows. Oh, you know, yeah. Well, the idea is that they just they want to eat it, right? They don't if they don't hit it perfectly, they're not going to wait for the perfect shot. They're just trying to hit it. So if they can hit it in the ass or in the neck or wherever the fuck they yeah. hit it, if they have poison. That thing's going to die, you know. They use poison for a lot of weird shit, too. They uh, use poison to fish. It's really strange. They take they this. They poison the fish? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. They take this uh, plant and they smash it up and they make it. It's like this green plant. I think, the, was that the Yanomame of um, somewhere, maybe Bolivia or something like that? It's one of those tribal peoples that lives almost almost uncontacted, but still some con like they'll, they'll have like Under Armour t shirts on and shit. It's weird. <laughs> okay. It's weird, but they, you know, they're barefoot. And they take these plants, and I forget what the kind of, what plant it is, but they smash this plant up and make like this green pulp, and then they put this pulp in these ponds, and these fish just float. It's some sort of toxin, and it just fucks these fish up, and they just float up to the top, and then they go and scoop the fish and take them out of there. But it like paralyzes them. It's not toxic to us, I guess. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe it must they just... be a little, but I guess you you have to be really fucking hungry. To think, yeah. okay, I'm not killing enough or, or getting enough fruits or vegetables. I'm going to poison these things. And I'd rather die being poisoned than starving to death. Well, I think these people have been on the edge of survival. Like They figured out survival down to like everything in their area. They know what's edible. They know what's dangerous, what to avoid, what to cultivate, what to seek out. They just... You know they know how to do it. So if these people are on a if if it's a resource rich island, it seems to be like an island in the middle of the ocean. As long as they don't kill too much, as long as they keep a certain healthy population of animals around and they're cognizant of that, is this these people? Yeah, this is a video I found on YouTube wow. from 2008 where some fishermen or someone found them and gave them they were giving them coconuts. Wow. So these people apparently, um, if you if you follow the the story. They came from Africa 60-something thousand years ago, oh, wow. and I guess probably during the Ice Age, the coastline was very different, right? The water levels were way lower. And then when the ice all melted, the oceans rose, and then we get what we got now. So maybe it was a, a much larger island, or maybe it was like the Bering landmass where you could get across it. Fuck. And they, must, they must speak a language that no one else, it, not even yeah, close to right? anything else, since it's been, like, so long. Fuck, man. Here's it combined with language. Throw it here is combined with body language. They seem to have a link. Hmm. So they were, like, telling them to throw things, and they're giving them coconuts. That's pretty cool. It's crazy how friendly they are without yeah. knowing who the person is and where they're from. Well, I mean, the dude's giving them free food, yeah. so I think they're pumped. Yeah. You're getting a bunch of free coconuts. I mean, that's <laughs> definitely a way to become friends with people. Yeah. <laughs> that you know? guy, if that guy had coconuts I instead of a Bible, uh, yeah. he'd probably <laughs> still be alive. He probably threw Bibles. Yeah. They're like, this yeah. is not a coconut, <laughs> you fuck. They tried to eat the Bible. They were like, motherfucker. Yeah. Look at that. Imagine some guy just showing up and giving you free food. Wow. <laughs> Can you see my dick? Is that, what is it? What is oh, this video? Like a, this know. video is outrageous. I don't know if that's a real translation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, um, so oh, it says a wooden axe similar to a mountain axe. Yeah, that's a fucking crazy looking being axe. Being carried by all men. So they, yeah, so they might not even have, like, metal. It seems like if he's got a wooden axe, I wonder if they have what, what they're using for arrowheads and stuff like that. This kind of stuff fucking interests me. Oh, dude, it's fascinating, man. The thing is, it's re what's weird about it is you can't really go there. Yeah. Like yeah, did you, you guys ever read or watch that um, that movie about um, the city of Z, the lost city of Z? Is that what it was called? Uh, that sounds it, it was about a, an explorer from England who uh, made his way to South America and eventually got eaten by cannibals. Allegedly, they think. Oh. But he was looking for this lost Mayan or Aztec city. Was it a Mayan city? The lost city of Z. Yeah. Uh, Amazon. Yeah, so he was looking for some, you know, apparently, and they they know this for sure now. There's some really, really, really ancient cities 
in the Amazon and they don't know what they are. They don't know from when. They don't know who who built them. So they don't even know from who. It's a different culture. Well, it's a culture that's long gone and it's the the area where they had the city has been absorbed by the jungle. So they they find it, I think, either from satellites or from some kind of imagery where they're noticing these really obvious grid patterns that indicate irrigation and that they had fields and they had streets. And so this there's this English explorer what was the gentleman's name? Harry Fawcett. Here's a yeah, it's, the, the book's not bad. Percy Fawcett. I'm Percy sorry. Fawcett. Percy. And so this this dude uh, went to the jungles of Brazil uh, multiple times looking what for this lost that? city of gold. Okay, 1867. Yeah. yeah. So he it was really it's a cool movie, but not it's not the best movie, but it's cool because it's like you you get to see the lost city of Z. He found it before he was killed? No, no, no. Oh, he he found something. He found something. I don't want to spoil alert the movie, but it's um, it's not a bad movie. What's interesting to me is that these people, you just got to put yourself in the mind of people that lived in 1860, and they, they literally had no idea what the fuck was going on in South America. They just, but someone would come back and, Sir Arthur has a story of his journeys down the jungle river. And the guy would stand up, we met the uncontacted tribe, and they would talk about, I've brought back pot- pottery, and this is a spearhead, and you know, and here's drawings of the, the animals that I saw. He's got drawings of crocodiles yeah. and fucking giant <laughs> piranhas and shit. 